Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian if you have me new around here, but if you're a returning subscriber, you probably are already well aware that I tend not to do too much reaction content here on the channel. But this video popped in my feed and this is a subject that is near and dear to my heart. And this is coming from a Xenovex clip called Final Fantasy 14 is not dying. And the opening of this video you can see behind me is you can see the various expansions, player population, and the obvious slump that is happening with Endwalker. Now I have uh, believed that this is just a natural slump, the cost of completing the story that takes place from here to here and here. And that natural story build up and conclusion just left a lot of people ready to take a break or ready to finally step away from the game. Whether they return or not is really the ultimate question because whether you want to accept it or not, obviously dying is a term that people label uh, you know, a game uh, for whatever reason, right? Usually it ends up just being a lot of trolls or a lot of people who are just trying to score, uh, score points but I view it completely differently. I think it, it's more of an individualistic take. Is the game living up to uh, your standards? Is this game bringing you joy? Uh, and overall, like the games, and if you think about it from an individual perspective, uh, this question really is going to fall on where you are and what level of burnout that you're experiencing. Because like it or not, my critiques about this game continue to be then echoed, usually with a little bit of a tail, by the community itself, namely because a story-driven RPG, like any single-player RPG, has ebbs and flows. And just like people report on it in these worlds, on these websites, in these videos, that a single-player game has massive population dips, Final Fantasy XIV manages to bridge that gap by inviting people back in with expansions and with story-driven content and some MMORPG elements. But that's where the critique really starts to kind of dive in. What kind of game are they trying to create? And Yoshi P has stated from the beginning, from the beginning, <laughs> that this is a game that you can take breaks from, that you can play other games from. And it's important that you as a player, like me as a player, do that. Now, I have stepped away from the game as of last October, and I have stated that I'm gonna to try to lose 100 pounds before I return. I have down, I'm down 40 pounds uh, so far in that journey. I don't know if I'll make it before uh, Dawn Trail, but regardless of the timing of that, uh, there's still plenty of time for that expansion. And yes, with Dawn Trail, you'll see it. Now, this is a reaction video, so I guess we should probably start uh, reacting to see what Zeno has to say. Let's dive in. You know, like I said, everything's fine, man. This is just the natural course of things. You'll see. You guys will see. For those of you that are like, oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. My game, my game is dying. You'll see when Dawn Trail comes out, it's going to be so. I guess for those people, I'd be generally very curious as to why that's actually that important. We know the game isn't just going to shut itself down. Hell, Final Fantasy XI still is running, and I wish they would do some more with that game, but that's another topic for another video, but moving into it. Um, yeah, I'd be very curious about if you have that view, if you're worried about the player population, what 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 negative impacts do you feel that's going to happen downstream? Do you feel that means that Square Enix is going to invest less in it? Or do you feel that you're not necessarily playing the most popular game right now? I think one key aspect is that hype is not a sense of people in a community right like usually once you get out of that hype cycle you generally get a good population you know reading and it's interesting and i would say it's actually uh good to see that overall for n walker and this is i think largely a part of the pvp updates that they've made they've been i think made able to maintain a lot but no matter what usually around the point three patch you start to see a big level of burnout i think you're seeing that now because the story is kind of this temporary placeholder but anyway Zeno, back to you it's fucking lit it's gonna be fine this is another instance where please just listen to the bald man <laughs> you know that's why when when i mention things when i suggest things that's why square enix listens that's why they're like you know what uh, he's right again no. I would push back on that. I would hope that Square Enix takes everybody's feedback into account and not just content creators. I know there is a general view that content creators have such more leverage with the uh, the various because we can actually bring those questions, but I feel the right responsibility is to take the feedback that we get as content creators about a game 
and then bring that to uh you know the uh, the devs not just like the things that we want to see but again i know the things that i would like to see in final fantasy 14 aren't the you know the, the the global populations things but i'd actually be very curious as to if you disagreed with me in the past but now you do you actually agree with me? If you if you can sound off in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you've come that far, if you come on this journey with me, where I push back on some of the things that I think Final Fantasy fourteen could do better, sound off. Anyway, back to you, Zeno. That guy, oh, he's right again. Damn him. Okay, fine. You don't believe me? Okay, look, I told him. I yo yo, I told him. I told him. I said this happens every expansion, man. I said, look, this happens every expansion. No, it doesn't. Um, and Shadowbringers is, I guess, the the key point. And one of the things when you look at Shadowbringers, we just jump back in here in time a little bit. Shadowbringers leading into Endwalker, them announcing that, doing these things, you can see obviously with Asmongold and uh, the 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 last uh, Rao, <laughs> Wow uh, Exodus uh, in this case, which I think Wow is actually doing much much better now. I'm not a Wow guy, so you guys can let me know one way or the other. Um, this was also the story of them saving the game. Outside of the in-game story, you have the story of them saving the game and building it back up and building it back up. What I'm looking for, because this in this way doesn't mean much to me as a player. It doesn't mean much to me as a gamer. What really is going to be interesting to see is the next and the next tier. The question I would be asking whether, whether uh, Final Fantasy XIV is dying or not is has this game reached its apex has this game reached the highest highs that it intends to climb because what you don't see over here is if the numbers go down let's just say this 200,000 or whatever this line is if they continue on at that at that round that's still a successful game that's still a winning strategy because if it's not then you would say that these games weren't successful you know and if they were able to maintain that and have that going forward like that's i think the overall what ultimately real fans of it want now what i would bet is that they end up doing something where they build up expansion over expansion you would see that tail get even bigger but they still have some technical challenges uh to overcome we go play other games we come back and everything's fine this has happened for 10 years man see these see these new players they don't know okay these new players they don't fucking know man but i don't know if it's new players let me know if you're a new player and you feel like this or if you're not like and you're a veteran what i see with this is more the veterans who come in as new players and then eventually transition to veterans find that they start hitting that burnout so I would classify them as a veteran, but maybe this is the first round of where they're like, why I, I don't want to stop playing. I think that's the general critique. I don't want to stop, but the game and the team and Yoshi P and them are, they, it feels like they're forcing me to stop, but I don't want to stop. I wish there was more for me to do in this game. And the best thing to do is to, is to stop. It's the healthiest thing. I've played so many great games over this last year. I've lost so much weight over this last year. And it's been so much more enjoyable for me as a content creator over this last year. That's not to say that I they, I, I, I want Don, Don Trail to be anything less. No, in fact, what's going to be interesting to see over the course of just the next couple of weeks is Xbox beta opens up 6.5, which generally tends to invite a lot of people in. I think it's going to be a slow burn on 6.5 due to how long it actually is due to the fact that the expansion is not coming out until summer 2024. I think that ultimately is going to have people maybe wait till the spring before they get real serious about jumping back into the content. But I know, and I know everything, dude, this is, this happened last expansion, happened the expansion before. I know. What? What? Tell them what? Fuck them? <laughs> Fuck them. That, you, that, yo, that, yo, that ain't for me. That ain't for me. Fuck them. You heard him. You heard the man <laughs> said, shut the fuck up. Fuck him. Stop your fucking worrying. Okay. I think that probably is generally good advice overall. Uh, how much, uh, how much does worrying actually get you? Uh, how much control do you actually have in your life? Uh, this is something that I struggle with. I'm at, like, you know, just always kind of like, what could I be doing? What should I be doing? Et cetera. Uh, and you know, and that's more or less, you know, life with kids and trying to figure and, and navigate that whole thing. But when it's all said and done, worrying isn't uh adding any value and honestly if you constantly find yourself in that um you know do whatever you can to kind of to, to kind of kind of in that way cog cognitive behavior therapy what is the source what is the root thought that's driving that that worry and then let's explore that and talk about that i think one of the things that 
does hamper this game and you're free to disagree uh is the uh for the overall like especially in the online community space uh you know the idea of kind of the hive mind this I, this idea that you can't speak ill about the game people get offended because of x y and z and honestly the idea of somebody you know being offended is is ludicrous at the end of the day like you just need to sometimes suck it up and get over it uh, and I think essentially we've seen that, that, you know, that take hold and a lot of people feel so they have to self-censor. They have to, they can't share their thoughts. They can't speak about certain things. And that that doesn't do the game any justice. That doesn't do anybody's mental health any justice. That doesn't do the world any good justice in this case. So don't worry, but don't be afraid to sit here and express your thoughts and more. And I've seen so many other videos that pop up in my feed talking about this game, which if you guys look back at the history on this channel, I made a video a long time ago talking about in before uh, people were saying like, oh no, Final Fantasy, you know, cause this all was what I, you know, like, everything that I've said, uh, you know, uh, and how I felt about it, I think is in a way justified, which is, it's it's not good to see. It's not like something to celebrate. I want people to enjoy their game. I want people to, to enjoy this game specifically. And I'm really happy that it's gonna come to Xbox. And I think that's gonna open up and expose the game to a lot more players, which will be a benefit uh, to the overall player population. And then pushing it again back into the, into the ups. <laughs> and it'll be neat to see what these uh, charts look like here in the future. Stop your fucking worrying, okay? <laughs> Everything's gonna be fine. Yoshi is a fucking genius, okay? He is a he's he's a master manipulator. He's a genius. He knows what the he's a master manipulator. Like, is that a compliment? If somebody called me a master manipulator like that, there, I think the negative connotation there is pretty daggum strong. Like the there's a level of uh, of all of that within like management, right? Like the goal of the manager is to make sure everything's working on it. But manipulation sounds like you're tricking somebody in this case now to speak to yoshi p he's seen a lot of he's i think he's lost some credibility when it comes to the exclusivity deal with sony and final fantasy 16 especially when it relates to not being on pc i think if they released 50, uh, 16 on pc and on playstation 5 you wouldn't see as dramatic of a pushback the console wars are just such a freaking wasted time and it's it, it just has the life like you got to look at it from a twitter perspective as a source of entertainment otherwise it will literally burn you out of just everything that's positive and unfortunately i think final fantasy 14 really falls on that now you might not necessarily like the game itself it does give me my voice is failing it does give me final fantasy 14 vibes and their pacing and how they've structured the game which i actually think is a very strong thing and i start to wonder if we'll see them add more to final fantasy 16 in the future having not yet finished it I've been actually holding some of my clips. Hopefully I'll get some Final Fantasy 16 stream time in soon so I can continue my journey in that game. But beyond that um, that piece, I really do wonder if that Yoshi P, if, you, if 16 is the for offline version of 14 where you then don't have to have these uh, you know, these patches that just keep everybody coming back. You're like, yep, it's every two years or three years. Here's your game. And maybe that's what we're kind of seeing with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, which I still have to play the remake as well. Man, dudes, I just need time. If you guys know how to figure out how to make more time in my day to play video games, sound off, while at the same time not sacrificing uh, the health and progress that I made there. What the fuck he's doing, man? Okay, he's a, he's, a, he's a fucking necromancer. He took this game and raised it, you know? Okay? Media to are secure. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And then it's going rolling over into Zeppelin's video about what she would do to fix Final Fantasy if West wanted changes in 14. I think if I was going to answer this question not having watched Zeppelin's video and just kind of put a button on this video itself, is the heart that I want is more investment into what makes Final Fantasy 14 an MMORPG. Uh, this isn't to insult the game. The game is designed from the day one. Like I've, you know, from playing it and stepping into ARR, uh, going all the way back, you can listen to the Aetherite Radio podcast if you want to go back through the archives. So this is an RPG MMO. It is a RPG. It is a Final Fantasy game first, and then it is an MMORPG. And that in and of itself is a strength that we've only seen them continue to make that investment. What I would change about the game is how it is structured between the single player modes and the multiplayer modes, because it feels very broken. Uh, and to say that as a, as a real term, the game is broken in terms that you can play this game very well as a single player. You can play this game very well with four people, but when you run into a two or a three man, or even like a five or a six, you start to have to compromise. You start to have to do these juggles 
that aren't necessarily fun. Why can't you as a new player, you know, or you invite your friend in that you guys run and do the fights, like everything in a multiplayer way? Like, why do you have to keep dropping party? Why isn't there just a way that you can kind of sink down to them, team up with them and play and enjoy the game? I think that could be really huge. But then you think about the trust system, right? Uh, and then the trust system says you got to be a single player. But what if you're a duo? What if you're a trio? What if you just want to take one trust and take your friends into the dungeon? I think that is essentially one of the things that would help, uh, you know, ease the gap. Because what you find is, at least what I find from my experience, is this, are we doing a multiplayer or am I just playing this game by myself? And sometimes it's like you just want to play and you got a friend, but then you're like, well, we want I want to do this, but it, this is the single player thing that I want to work on. And it it's a bummer that, that we can't ease that burden. We can't break that down, bring it in together and make it a little bit more fun. And then also some of the things that they continue to push off later in the game, I think it's going to be interesting to see what challenges they have to overcome in the next couple of years, the next couple of expansions, if they continue to make the story, especially the Zodiac Heidelin, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> saga, I was like, do a blank on the word. Uh, if they continue to make that the be all end all, okay, then boom, you, you step into, uh, you know, like this requirement that continues to become even more and more uh, burdensome to new players and intimidating to new players. Imagine being like, because we always just wonder, like, is there going to be a point where in order for you to get to the content that I'm in, you got to put a thousand hours in because then you're just really keeping people away. Now, the final and most controversial thing that I'll say in this video. So if you made it here to this point, sound off in the comments, secret shout out, uh, secret, uh, you know, let's say, uh, what's a good term. Let me think. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say bun bun. If you made it to this point in the video, sound off with bun bun in your comments. So I know you made it to the secret call out because I think one of the things that will be very interesting in terms of that player population. Let me see if I can go back to Zeno's video real quick. And you know, like there we go. Um, one of the things that'll be interesting in player population and especially keeping it going up and up and up is I do think that the subscription will not make sense at some point for this game's future. Uh, not that they're going to voluntarily get rid of it at any point in time, but when you start to really look at player population, especially with the newest wave, this buy to play wave, this free to play wave of MMOs to come in and to start to really kind of set root for a lot of players, it's a saturated market. And at that point, you got to sit here and say like, and we're seeing it. We're seeing the removal of the subscription fee with the free trial. And I do wonder how long that can last. I still think this game could be a sub optional game where you limit certain things. Maybe you limit the current expansion or the previous two expansions to be playable only if you're subscribed, only engage with the market if you're subscribed, but then ultimately opening up the game for more and more people to purchase it and actually play it. So that will be something very interesting to see in the long run, something I'm watching carefully to see if we have any hints of that. And uh, yeah, that's where we're going to leave it. Guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'm going to smash that like button on Zeno's video because I liked it. That was a really good video. I appreciate him, uh, you know, or whoever clipped that and putting that up on his clips channel uh, as well. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for being here. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. But until then, take care.